So Paul has says here that he taught the Philippians this many times before. That there are many who are currently living as enemies of the cross. Let's, uh, let's pick it up at uh, verse 15. He says, all of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we've already attained. So join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So, Paul says he's taught the Philippians this many times. There are many who are currently living as enemies of the cross of Christ. Now, we can't be exactly sure who Paul is referring to here. Could be he's talking about the Judaizers. Could be he's talking about unsaved people. Could be he's talking about Christians who are lacking maturity and kind of pulling others down with them. But the way they live, he says, is contrary to the way of the cross of Jesus Christ and the way the cross of Christ calls us to live. And Paul describes them this way. And I, I, one of the reasons I love Paul is because he's a list maker. You know, and you guys know me, I'm a list maker. So this is what he says to describe them. He says, their destiny is destruction. If they don't repent, where they're going to end up is hell. He says, their God is their stomach. The thing that they worship is their sinful appetites. Their glory is in their shame. They are proud of their sin and the ways they rebel against God. Their mind is on earthly things. Where should a Christian's mind be? On heavenly things, yeah. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Now, according to Colossians 3.2, and I just quoted it to you, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. According to that verse, who's responsible for where our thoughts are focused? We are. We are, right? So, why is it important where our thoughts are centered? Directs our life? Directs our heart? Yeah. So, we are to set our minds on things above. Okay? We're responsible for doing that. We've talked about some of the reasons why that is so critical. How do you set your mind on things above and not on earth? Okay, be in the Word, prayer. So he says that their mind is on earthly things, they glory in their shame, and then Paul contrasts that with who we are in Christ, and he gives us another list. He says our citizenship is in heaven. We don't have our minds focused on earthly things because we know we belong first and foremost to heaven. He says, we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't allow ourselves to be driven by our sinful appetites, but we fully expect and eagerly look forward to Jesus coming again. And that shapes our lifestyles. And it says, our bodies will be transformed to be like His glorious body. Destruction isn't in our future. Glory is. Glory is. Well, I just, want to, I just want to point one thing out as we wrap this up. Chapter 2 of Philippians was about God becoming a man and how as a result of that, we should live humble, loving, sacrificial lives. Here in chapter 3, Paul kind of flips the coin. In chapter 3, Paul talks a lot about us becoming like Christ in the resurrection and how as a result of that, we should live holy, righteous, godly life.